everyone, welcome back to CJ Explores. This time we're spending the weekend in Edinburgh. This is Victoria Street and this place is it's kind of known because it's quite a colourful and interesting street. It shapes around so a lot of people take birds from the bottom. It just looks like fun and quirky. This place looks so magical and Scottish and just out of the land of Harry Potter. Like, yeah, the buildings are so tall. So this is Victoria Street and then up there is Victoria Terrace. Really high up above and these colourful buildings, all the flags. It's such a, I don't know, quirky, interesting place. Exactly how I was picturing Scotland to be. It just feels like full of history and really um, Scottish. We have come to Hula Juice Bar. It's just at the end of Victoria Street. So Corey has this fabulous view <laughs> and I have a view of Corey's face. <laughs> we actually, Corey's looking for coffee. They don't do coffees, they do loads of like breakfast um, food and health food. But uh, I've gone for a, we've got a chai and a matcha latte on the way. Perfect spot to sit and watch the Scottish life go by. This is the entrance up to the terrace. So I'm really keen to see what this street looks like from above. And Penny's residence up there. <gasps> I can hear bagpipes. Everything's so Scottish. Have a peek over here. We are up near the castle and the weather is doing a little 180 on us. It's starting to rain a little bit now. Um, and we have some time to kill actually before we go on our castle tour. Uh, we can't get in there until 12.30 to 1.30. We have taken shelter in the Castle Arms now and I've gone for a local lager. This is an innocent gun. While we wait till we can go in the castle. The rain has stopped. Very up and down weather, but now we are heading almost to the castle. It's located very central in the city, so you can walk to it from all the like the main streets, the main attraction area. Okay, we've got our tickets for the castle. There's like an automated machine where you put your scan your barcode and put your name in. It was sold out, so make sure you book your tickets in advance. We did it, I think, about a week ago, and you can choose the time slot to end server. Yeah, today was completely sold out, so do these online. And if you've got English Heritage Passage, you get half price. It's very windy. Thankfully, the castle stayed open. But yeah, I think Glasgow Castle was closed today, I saw. They do have some traditional maps and audio guides that you can buy, but they also have a QR code and you scan it and you get this map of the castle. And we're going to actually head towards the one o'clock dump because I read that's one of the main things to see the castle. And we have about 25 minutes till one o'clock. So we'll head that way. Come and see this view, it's really good. Wait for one o'clock gun. Let's check the time. Five two. I have no idea what it is. I think it's just like a gun shot. But we'll wait and check it out. A bit of excitement. There's a crowd forming. <laughs> that was very dramatic. Now we're getting rained on. I need to drop my phone outside. <laughs> That was very exciting, the whole crowd was completely silent. <laughs> then as soon as the gun was fired, it went and <laughs> dropped everything. And yeah, the heavens have just opened. Actually, I think it's stopping a little bit. It just seems to be very on and off today. I think we're gonna go find some shelter because there's actually like houses up here. It's not just a castle, it's like a village. It's a private residence. Thank you, Nick. This weather's challenging. <laughs> There's tiny gravestones, it's really cute. This is Mons Meg. It is the largest gun ever to be fired on UK soil. It has a 20 inch wide barrel and look at the cannonballs down there. They are so ridiculous. It was designed to smash castle walls. It's a beast, <laughs> look at it. And now we're going to head in towards the Royal Apartments. It's where James VI was born, son of Queen Mary of Scots. Oh, we've got portraits of all the past king and queen and all the royal family. They 
have humongous fireplaces in these rooms and I love them. I love big fireplaces. They're cool, isn't they? There's a lot to see, isn't, isn't there? So much here. Yeah, it is just a town on a hill. This castle is actually built on top of an old volcano. So it, that's why it's so high and you have a magnificent view over Edinburgh. But yeah, it's really interesting uh, how my perspective was it's going to be just like this one building. But it's this whole, yeah, town and community up here. We are on the West Panorama now. This is going to be our last spot at Edinburgh Castle. If you can hear me, well done, because these winds, I think they're up to 50 miles an hour. But I think now we're going to head back into town and find somewhere to eat because we've been here a while and we're getting very hungry. We've exited the castle now and we're going to head down to Grass Market. Uh, we think that there's lots of food options this way. There's only one way to find out and that is to go. Yeah, definitely correct. There's loads of food options here. There's markets, loads of restaurants and I can smell the food in the air. I think we're just going to explore and see what we fancy. We are taking a little walk now because we're actually diverting from that market area because Corey's found somewhere he wants to eat. But on our way, we're going to go to this viewpoint and it's supposed to have a really nice view of Edinburgh Castle. The view itself is just at the top of the stairs and as you can see, you can just sit on the steps and take the views in of Edinburgh Castle. It's really lovely. I'm going to go have a peek in the cat cafe. Oh, they look so cute. Wow. So we were on our way to a vegan Italian restaurant, um, but the rain just started coming down. So we have ducked into this place here, which is called Crumb. It's a very cute little place. They have loads of vegan options. We've both ordered a vegan grilled cheese and a coffee, and we are going to wait for the rain to pass until we do any more exploring. the next adventure we're gonna go check out Royal Mile. As soon as we came outside the rain started. <laughs> well we'll have to go to my cafe to shelter. Hey, Full sunshine now, I need my sunnies out. <laughs> Can't pick it. No. That sun is actually lovely and warm and it's like I can feel it <laughs> warming up my back. As you may be able to hear, we're on the Royal Mile now, and we think we're going to go and have a look at St. Giles Cathedral, or Giles Cathedral. Um, yeah, it's very busy here. This stretch connects us from here all the way up to the castle, so it's a very, very busy thoroughfare. Um, yeah, a lot of atmosphere here, Saturday yeah. afternoon. Lovely. But here we are at St. Giles Cathedral. <laughs> Huge. Oh, I'm to go and fix your shoes. Wait to Europe. Five pounds entry by donation. I don't know if you can call it donation if you charge five pounds <laughs> to get in. I don't mind paying for places like Edinburgh Castle, but um, I know that there's so many cathedrals that are going to see in Europe soon on our Europe trip. They're all for free. Um, but it looks beautiful from the outside, so we're going to go over there and get a good perspective of it. You enjoying it? Yeah, it's pretty wide, it's really long and it actually goes down the hills, you can see right down to the ocean. Really? It's really nice, yeah. yeah. Oh, we're reading again. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the rain to stop. We've just jumped off the Golden Mile now and we are looking for an Indian restaurant <laughs> of all cuisines. Um, one here that looks like it has pretty good vegan options is called Roti. Found it! Well, we can definitely recommend that place. Yeah, very yummy. Yeah, that food was so tasty, very authentic um, Indian cuisine. Lots of flavours, loved it. We were told a little story by my nan about Grey Fries Bobby and it's this guy who died a long time ago. However, he did have a pet dog and the dog didn't want to leave the 
man's brave and he stayed in this one spot for ages. I think waiting for his owner to come back, he never did. And eventually the community kind of adopted this dog, gave him shelter, gave him food. And then when he passed away, they buried him kind of just outside of the graveyard of his owner. But there's now a little statue, there's a pub. There's this whole area dedicated to this dog and it's very sweet. We just met a lovely local Scottish man who was telling us a story about Grey Friars Bobby and then he said to us, um, actually if you're into Harry Potter, which I am, so he said go check out the graveyard. Some of the names in there actually inspired JK Rowling uh, for some of the characters she created. And he said, look out for Dumbledore, we've already seen McGonagall. It's a very windy day today in Edinburgh, we actually have wind warnings for the castle. Uh, there's so many tourists back too, obviously this is our first kind of trip around the UK since uh, you know what. That very popular gravestone right there is where uh, Mr. Thomas Riddle is buried, a real person that later inspired the character Tom Riddle, who was he who must not be named. Very cool. I have just seen this poster. Oh, we didn't see Potter. Ah. But obviously, there's no Dumbledore there. I think that was a mistake for the, by the locals saying Dumbledore. I think he just used Dumbledore as a name for Harry Potter characters, but still. I didn't know about that place, so as, as a Harry Potter fan, that was really cool to see. Oh, Doggy Bobby. This is the dog Bobby, and it's his statue to commemorate how faithful and what a good boy he was. <laughs> He's got a gold nose that everyone's given a little pat. If, like us, you have chosen to stay outside of the city centre, then you will probably need some transport to get in. And yesterday we were taking Ubers and it was costing quite a lot of money, but we found there is a bus service which is capped at £4.40 per day, so you can ride as much as you want. Let's see how good it is. <laughs> Well, what do you reckon? How's the bus? That was easy, you use your card. Just tap it once um, and the bus service will remember your card so you'll be capped at £4.40 per day. Or 20 for the week. Very good. We are going on a walking tour today, so we're going to do a walking tour in the Old Town. We're meeting them soon at 11 o'clock and they're going to take us all around to us out of interesting history in Edinburgh's Old Town. So quite exciting because you do like to learn a bit more about places we visit. And this is a really good way. This is a free one and these are just asked for a donation at the end. So I need to go find some cash. And this became an English occupation of Scotland. And these nobles who wanted to be king then had to swear allegiance to Edward as overlord. But not everybody would. And at this point, two of Scotland's most ferocious freedom fighters came forward. <laughs> because of the number of writers that have come out of this city, so much so that UNESCO in 2004 named Edinburgh its first ever city of literature. This is so interesting. I am loving it. I now want to do a free walking tour in every city we go to. <laughs> I went and bought an umbrella thinking oh, we'll need this but amazing hopefully it stays this way because it is so much nicer exploring the city in the sunshine yeah, maybe that's the trick maybe you buy an yeah. umbrella buy an umbrella so if you do the sun comes out when we were in this graveyard yesterday we said that a man told us about a school that was potentially inspired Hogwarts and it turns out that school there actually used to be an orphanage and when JK Rowling used to sit in the elephant room that is kind of overlooking this area um, she would see that orphanage now turned into a private school and looking at it you can see how she could have got some inspiration for yeah. the design of Hogwarts. A nice thing is that even though it's a private school it still has ties with its orphan heritage. Uh, they fund about 5% of the children that go there are orphans and they fund their whole school career. If you've enjoyed the tour my name's Kenny, if you've not enjoyed the tour my name is Samantha. <laughs> Well, that was a great tour, I think. We, we learned a lot about the history of Edinburgh. Um, it was particularly interesting to hear how the city was built over the many centuries and how it was this huge 14-storey 14, 14 metropolis made of timber. <laughs> um, and what was the nickname of the place? Um, Old Smelly. Old Reeky. Yeah. Old Reeky was the nickname because it stunk like feces. <laughs> 
Well, after all that walking, we have worked on appetite, so we have come to Bowls. It's just up the road from Greyfriars Graveyard. And we have a um, breaky bowl and some udon noodles. So we are now in the new town of Edinburgh and this was designed for the wealthy people of Old Town to have a nice place to live. Um, it was actually a bit of a cesspit before that and then it was drained and built and they called it the Athens of the North because of the style of architecture at that time. And what we're going to see at the end of New Town, there's a building up there which was supposed to be a replica of the Parthenon in Greece, but they ran out of money when they were building it. So um, it is not complete, but it still looks cool. We're going to go up and visit it at the end of New Town. Old Town looks really cool from this perspective actually, because we've not seen it from over this side. No. And look up, it looks really impressive. The old buildings look incredible. It's like a, it is like a movie set here, isn't it? Yeah. Funny little piece of information about this clock right here is it is a few minutes fast because it sits above the train station, encourages locals and travellers alike to get to their trains on time a few minutes early. So we just climbed the 143 steps up to the top of Calton Hill and there's lots of monuments here. We're going to go straight to the National Monument that's modelled on the Parthenon. I'm in the Parthenon. Okay, we have climbed up to the National Monument here in Edinburgh and I actually thought it was going to be like a big flat surface up there. But it's not. It is a grassy knoll, unfinished like we said earlier because they ran out of money. Bugger. But apparently these stones, these lintels on top, they are the largest pieces of stone ever mined in Scotland. Uh, it's very windy up here. It's a little bit scary actually. <laughs> I keep like trying to film a reel on my gimbal and I come around this corner and my gimbal's like Wah! in the wind. Nice view here. I think it blown away. So from the top of Carlton Hill, there is this place called the Collective, and it is free to enter. Though there is some fee to go to the toilet. It is one pound. Probably one of the most expensive toilets I've seen. But from up here, you get a perspective of the true size of Edinburgh. It's a huge city. It's very, very big. We can see Arthur's in the distance, and it looks so epic. We really want to go up here. We're going to try and get up there. I think tomorrow morning after we've checked out because you can imagine the view you get of Edinburgh from up there. I'm just hoping it's not too windy in the morning. Um, or at least not raining, but lack of wind will be good too. Seems like Newtown is a place where you've got your shopping malls and your more modern shops. Um, it looks, this section, like any city really, anywhere. Um, so you should probably get your bits and bobs if you need them, but we are going to venture a little bit away and see what we can find. I Hi. I know where we're going. Charlotte oh, has you? requested a something warm to drink. Yes. So uh, I've got somewhere in mind. Nice very, little veggie spot. Yeah, very yummy. And there is another store we just found out. Uh, I think it's in the west end of Edinburgh. A um, bit more of an open airy building apparently, but I don't think we'll have time to check it out. You might have to do that yourselves. So we have just meandered our way all the way through the new town of Edinburgh, but we have made our way now to Dean Village, or we're just heading down to Dean Village now. And just looking over Dean's Bridge, you can already hear the, the bird sounds. It sounds very tranquil down here, um, and it's starting to look very cute. So Charlotte is excited because she had this one on our hit list, Dean Village which used to be the old mills, I think. The old grain mills or water mills for Edinburgh. It's so pretty here. I can't believe this is just an Edinburgh city. Like you think you're just out in the middle of nowhere, like a little country town or a little country village. Bridge, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. You can't hear the city at all. You just hear like sounds of nature, the birds, like the stream below. It is definitely one of the more Beautiful, like fairy, even like all of Edinburgh is very fairy tale like, but this is definitely like a little enchanted fairy tale village. 
and then you have like the medieval kind of like fairy tale style Edinburgh. Uh, yeah, these are all the highlights for me. Hey, <laughs> so we are back out again. We just popped home for a little bit of a rest, but we have come back into the city. We're in Old Town and we are gonna go on. I will be your guide today. We're in a torture chamber right now, just entered the vault, We're having a look at all the torture equipment. It's all authentic stuff used between the 14th and 18th century. And then we're going to get further into the vault. Anybody want to take a guess as to what this vault was used for? Um, well, we what? survived the <laughs> underground vault tour. <laughs> it wasn't the most exciting or most scary tour I've ever been on. In fact, I'm not even sure the stories were real. It didn't, they didn't feel very real to me. I think um, it was cool to go underground, but I think to make it more of an experience as a tour, like they created some kind of spooky stories. Like some of them were probably true, and elements of truth, but all of the stories were very much like, happened to the guests or happened to the tour guides. There was no like, not many true crime stories. Um, so it's a bit of a pinch of salt for the whole thing. <laughs> um, yeah, but cool to get a little bit of the actual history um, of the vaults and how they were used as like storage for all the um, merchants up there. Um, and then they became unusable because of the leaking volcanic stone that they were built out of. Anyway, let's go find some dinner. So we were planning to go to the Italian restaurant for dinner, but they were full, they seemed very popular. It was really cozy in there actually. Would love to have been able to eat there, but no. We have gone to plan B, just up the road. There is a place where we had takeaway from when we first got here. We know they're good. I just called them, they have space for us, so we're heading there now. We're walking around Brunsfield, and it's a really cool little area. Loads of cafes and uh, little kind of independent stores. Well, this looks delicious. I've got a nourish bowl and Corey has got a Beyond Burger. Uh, I think it's called the Seed Burger and it's got mushrooms and cheese and some nice hand-cut homemade fries. Yum. Food in my belly! Woo -hoo -hoo. Right, we have just pulled up in the Dynamic Earth Car Park and we are getting ready to hike Salisbury Crags. Uh, it's near the Holyrood Palace and it gives us a beautiful view over all of Edinburgh. But we can see Salisbury Crags up there. It looks very epic. We can see people standing on top and uh, let's see how long it takes to hike. Hey, Salisbury. Hey, <laughs> come on, shit, sir. <laughs> We've gone off the main path and we are just gonna go up as much as we can. Get those little calves pumping um, because the car park we're in is a bit expensive. <laughs> it wasn't our first choice. Um, but anyway, looks like a short walk but it's just quite steep. And on this side, we can see up to Arthur's seat. You can see people up there. It looks even more epic than this. But, um, we're not going to do that one today. <laughs> oh my God. It's a bit scary. <laughs> it's very steep. All right, are you ready? This is how we get our shots. <laughs> All right, go. some rain so I'm gonna have to head back down soon but it's a really nice spot imagine if this had better weather it's only about a 30-40 minute hike up to the top 
Um, maybe a bit longer if you take the normal path. We took a different shorter path. But it'd be an amazing picnic spot, wouldn't it? Yeah. Come up here with some snacks and a drink. Look at that. Amazing. We're really near the edge. <laughs> We are now at the top of Salisbury Crag. As you can see behind me over there is like the sheer cliff face. It looks really epic. And then high above we can see Arthur's Seat. I think Arthur's Seat would be an incredible high, but the weather's turning, so I don't think I'm gonna add it on.